Tech family, we are rocking. Welcome to part two of my ultimate laptop buying guide, where we look at laptops in the 800 to 1,200 US dollar price range. Whether you are shopping for Black Friday, Christmas, school, or any other reason, I wanted to create an up-to-date video to help you find the perfect laptop. Now, if you haven't seen part one, please make sure you do. In that part, I cover general tips and buying advice that will apply to you, as well as recommendations for shoppers with a budget less than 800 US dollars. Part three of the guide covers shopping for laptops above $1,200. I'll post links to both of them in the description below. If you're new to the channel, I'm Josh, and I buy and review a ton of laptops and talk tech from the perspective of what it's like to own and use these devices. If at the end of this video, you like what you watch, don't forget to smash that subscribe button, hit the thumbs up, and the notification bell. It shows your appreciation for the insane amount of work that goes into making these. Now in this three-part guide, as I walk through each price bracket, I'll tell you exactly what you should look for, and if necessary, what you should compromise on. In this analysis, I'll cover every major type of laptop user, including those just browsing the web and using Office, students, programmers, photo and video editors, and of course, gamers. All right, let's get into the 800 to 1,200 US dollar price range. In this range, you should be able to get everything you got in the budget category, plus brighter screen so you can view content more comfortably and less sacrifices when it comes to build quality. There are some really good laptops in this price range. Let's start off with a new Dell XPS 9310. I have one right here. I recommend the i5 processor, 1920 by 1200 resolution display, and 8 gig of RAM in dual channel mode. This is an extremely premium laptop. The keyboard, trackpad, and display are all excellent, and it is a joy to use. On that display, I normally feel 13 inch screens are too small to use as a primary device. However, this one with its 13.4 inch screen and 16 by 10 aspect ratio, which increases the amount of information you can see when browsing the web or using Microsoft Word because there's more vertical space, I feel it shows enough information to be above that line and suitable to be your main device. Seriously guys, this is one of the laptops I personally own and I really like using it. Heck, the script for this video that you're watching right now was written on it. Now, the fan noise isn't too bad from this laptop, however, at times you can hear it a little. It also does get quite warm to the touch, particularly on the keyboard deck, and the RAM cannot be upgraded. By the way, casual users, you should not be overly worried about 8 gigs of RAM. Modern operating systems like Windows or Mac OS make better use of RAM than they did previously. They compress data in memory and swapping to disk no longer causes the severe slowdowns it used to, as most laptops use fast NVMe storage. My second pick for casual users is the IdeaPad Slim 7 with AMD. Unfortunately, I haven't got one in yet because they are super hard to find. No surprises given that it really does tick all the boxes. What I mean by that is it's got a good color accurate screen that is bright enough, the keyboard is comfortable, the trackpad is accurate, and it comes with a powerful AMD processor. My runner up for casual users is the HP Envy 13 with the AMD processor and the 400 nit brightness screen option. I have one right here. This laptop is so frigging good. It runs much cooler to the touch than the Dell XPS making it more comfortable to use. It also folds into a tablet and is easy to take notes or draw on, which you may really like. It's still a very premium feeling device too, although not quite at the XPS level. Oh, and if you are looking for great battery life, this one has you covered. The main reason I placed it behind the Dell is because it has a slightly smaller screen and a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. This means that for most tasks, you'll see less information. Because of this, I feel this is a great secondary laptop if you already have a desktop or a more powerful laptop as a primary device. Before I move on, let's talk about Apple. It's in this price range that you will be able to afford one of the new Apple MacBook Airs with the M1 chip, and maybe even a MacBook Pro with the M1 chip. We all know Apple makes high quality devices, and they are promising a leap forward with their new M1 ARM CPU. My Air and Pro are arriving at the same time that this guide goes live, so please ensure you are subscribed to the channel with the notification bell on, as I'm going to get my review out super quick. Until that review lands though, Anything I say about those laptops like hypothetically much longer battery life or perhaps poor performance on non-ARM optimized apps is just speculation. Lastly, before we move on from casual users, you may be tempted for a discounted Lenovo C940 with Intel's older 10th gen. I've seen big discounts from Best Buy, 
I don't mind this laptop, especially if you get the 4K model with 16 gig of RAM, sub $1,200. But the keyboard and trackpad isn't as comfortable or accurate to use as the laptops I've already mentioned, so I'd prefer you stuck with those. But if you do want an option for a 16 gig of RAM machine and a high resolution display in this price range, that's a decent option. All right, if you are a software developer shopping in this range, I would definitely prefer you sacrifice a more premium feeling laptop like the ones I recommended for a more powerful processor, at least 16 gig of RAM and a decent sized screen. Minimum 14 inches, but preferably 15. You'll wanna see a decent amount of code on the screen. Plus, programmers tend to run more applications than normal users, thereby requiring more RAM. I got two awesome options for you one AMD and one Intel. For the AMD option, check out the ThinkPad T14. You should be able to get it with the 8-core 16-thread Ryzen CPU. This is a beast of a CPU. Also, a great thing about this laptop is one stick of RAM is user replaceable. So I'd advise you to get 16 gig of the soldered RAM in single channel, if you can afford it, say right now. That way you can upgrade to 32 gig later. If you can't afford that, no probs, just get the 8 gig soldered now and you can upgrade that second 8 gig stick later for 16 gig of RAM. Please make sure you upgrade the screen in this laptop. The 250 nit one is too dim in my opinion, you'll be squinting at lines of code. I'd get at least 300 nit one, but aim for the 400 nit one. Overall, this is a ThinkPad, which means it's built to last and has the best keyboard money can buy. When you are sitting there coding for hours on end, having a great keyboard matters. Plus, the power of this machine is exceptional. All right, if you want a bigger screen so you can see more lines of code than the 14-inch display of the T14, the XPS 15 9500 is a good alternative. It's a more premium feeling device, but you are sacrificing some portability and that powerful AMD CPU. That being said, the 6-core 12-thread 1750H that you hopefully will be able to afford in your price is a pretty powerful processor as well. In this range, you will likely only be able to find it with 8 gig of RAM, but the good news is the RAM's upgradable, so you can put in 16 gig cheaply later on. I would definitely try to get this laptop with that 10750H CPU, as of course the CPU isn't upgradable. And I wouldn't advise buying the 4-core 10300H CPU. For your use case, it's not as powerful as I'd like. Some other negatives to consider of this laptop are that it's quite heavy, so you'll likely not want to use it on your lap. Also, it gets warm to the touch and there can be manufacturing issues with it, like the loose trackpad. If you get one with an issue like that, return it for one that doesn't have it. If you do want something lighter in weight, cheaper, still 15 inch and AMD, try to find a souped up IdeaPad 515 with an 8 core Ryzen CPU and 16 gig of RAM. That would still be an excellent option. However, it is very hard to find and you will lose color accuracy in the display. So this is only a decent option for someone that isn't going to do any photo or video editing on the laptop. One last recommendation for a software dev that may sound crazy is the HP Omen 15. Yes, a gaming laptop. If you don't need much portability from the laptop, this is a really good option. It is crazy powerful, has upgradable RAM, a good keyboard, and a bright color accurate display. Plus, it isn't that big for a 15 inch gaming laptop either. The bonus of this is you'll be able to do some solid gaming in your downtime. Anyway, let's talk about gamers as you really can get something awesome for your money in this price range. Both the Lenovo Legion 15 and the HP Omen are phenomenal options. They both have fast AMD processors, solid graphics cards, excellent fast refresh rate screens, great keyboards and upgradable RAM. Jared from Jared's Tech prefers the Lenovo Legion 15, which he meticulously laid out why in his comparison video. And I prefer the HP Omen, which I personally use as my gaming laptop. Links to both our videos in the description below. For video editors and photo editors, things are a little rough in this price range. It's very hard to get a good quality 15 inch display with solid color accuracy and powerful enough components. The one laptop that rises to this occasion is the HP Envy 15. I have one right here. It comes with many configurations. Hopefully there are some decent sales on it so you can upgrade the display and still stay within your budget. Having a good display like the 4K OLED panel that's available for it really is going to be key for you. Oh, and before we leave this price range, one last one from me, the Asus G14. This is an extremely high performance 14 inch laptop. I see this as more of a hybrid device. It is not going to be better than the laptops I mentioned for any specific use case. However, if you are spanning use cases, i.e. you want something portable, lightweight, powerful, that you can game on, this is a decent option. You will sacrifice the bigger screen of the XPS 15 if you're a programmer, or the better gaming panel of the 15 inch HP Omen or Lenovo Legion 15. But you of course get more portability. 
All right, that's the end of my roundup on the 800 to 1,200 US dollar price range. Make sure you check out part one of this series covering my overall buying tips and laptops under 800 US dollars. Also part three covering laptops above $1,200. If you like this video, you know what to do. Smash that subscribe button, hit the thumbs up and the notification bell. I would certainly appreciate it. Until next time, I will catch you later.